All right, guys, thanks for joining this month's webinar, 2021 Guide to Google Maps. There's been a lot of algorithm updates and, and just stuff going on, you know, almost weekly here in 2021. And this is, you know, usually one of our most popular webinars because the Google Maps and Google rankings is becoming more and more important as, you know, time goes on because I think people are starting to realize that the majority of leads are coming through the Google map rankings versus the paid ads, the pay-per-click and stuff like that. And if you were here on, you know, the, the webinar I did at the beginning of the year in January, we kind of talked about having a comprehensive approach is ideal if you want to dominate your local marketplace, and, you know, and get the most traffic, the most leads and the most jobs in your damage restoration business. And then, you know, this year we've been doing it every month, every couple months. Um, we've been breaking down each one of those pieces and kind of getting more granular for you guys to kind of show you what's working now. Um, and, you know, and this is this is different than last year, right? There's always updates. So we, you know, as our company, we always have to be on stop on top of the latest trends, what's working now. Um, and then we, we obviously implement that, implement that for our clients. And I want to do these webinars to add some value to you guys so you can kind of know what you should be doing um, if you want to try and do it, the work yourself or, you know, if you're working with another marketing company. Um, something to kind of audit them and make sure they're they're doing what they you know are supposed to be doing. So, you know, if I can have y'all's attention, like I don't want I know every you know time is money, like I think your time is valuable, but you know everybody just focus. You know I can do a Q and A at the end, and we can uh, you know answer any questions we have. But you know this is this is extremely important, so y'all should um, you know pay attention while while we're here. Now, you know, some of you may know me, some of you may not. Um, I mean, this isn't really, a, you know, about me, but, you know, been doing this for years been in, in the internet marketing world and construction world. So that is one thing, you know, about us. We kind of understand it from both sides, actually being out in the field doing the work and understanding it from an internet marketing uh, perspective. And, you know, we've been specializing with damage, for damage restoration companies for years, I mean, this is, you know, why we do it. We love helping our clients grow their businesses by getting their internet marketing right. So today, what we're going to cover is, you know, I kind of already touched on this, but there's been a lot of updates, a lot of changes, and, and this is one of the most, if, if I had to pick, you know, they're all important, but if I had to pick the most important aspect to getting your digital marketing presence, you know, correct, it would be the Google Maps ranking. And there's a reason for that, which I'll get into more later in the webinar. But the majority of the rankings and leads come through the Google Maps rankings, right? So we're going to discuss some of that today. We're going to go over the five biggest issues that could be holding you back. We're going to kind of show you what we do and that's what's proven to work. And then we're going to discuss some, uh, some tools and stuff to where you can automate and systemize um, a lot of this to kind of make things easier on, on your end. So... You know, I still hear it. I don't, you know, hopefully at this point, um, I, I don't have to convince you otherwise, but, you know, there's I still talk to um, restoration company owners and they're still maybe not quite sold on, uh, you know, I don't need a website. I've been doing this for years. I get referrals, uh, you know, but we, we don't have any clients, you know, doing 20 million a year that are just doing on referrals, right? Now it's 2021. I think we can all can agree that the internet, Google, Facebook, Google Maps, all this stuff's not, it's here to stay, right? So, you know, and, and I, part of this webinar today, I want to kind of prove that Google Maps is extremely important and you should be focusing, uh, putting a lot of attention on it uh, in, your, in your company and in your damage restoration company. So, you know, and every now and then I come across, I talk to some owners and, and it's okay if you're not that familiar with it, right? Like we're all at different stages in our, our learning curve as far as you know what is what on Google because just because somebody says I found you on Google well there's many different places on Google that they can you know make that phone call and call you right so for those of you that don't know this is the Google Maps ranking section here right um, and I'll go I have another slide to show you a little bit more of a breakdown on what's what but we got Google local service ads Google ads here and then we call it the, sometimes we call it the money box, right? Because it drives the most business for our clients. We kind of jokingly call it the money box. You hear it called the three pack sometimes because there's three listings, but this is the Google My Business Profiles ranked. And this is the top three is where you want to be because that's where the most traffic and, and jobs come from. 
And as you can see in the screenshot, 44% of all the calls that come from page one come from the three pack. So that's almost basically half of all calls made from the first page of Google come from the three pack. So, I mean, that, that alone should be, you know, enough data to kind of show you that, yes, it matters. Yes, it's important if you're interested in getting more, more leads, more jobs, and growing your, your restoration business. Um, and this is just another example of, uh, you know, somebody in, or, or the, I wanted to show you an example, like, all right, this, for this particular client, number two in the three pack. So what does this mean is they got 50% and, and this is actually an older, um, an older screenshot, but so they got 50% of their leads from the Google My Business, right? So this is just to me, like, I'm not just saying this is where all the calls are coming. I wanted to show you uh, that the majority of the, the leads are coming. So this client in this particular month got 61 raw leads, um, you know, removing the duplicates, existing clients and all that, right? So this is 61 leads that month. And then half of them came from the Google My Business. Um, so yes, it drives calls. And I mean, just to show you all, because I was looking at this earlier too, because I know that screenshot is kind of hard to tell like how this is broken down. So I wanted to show you guys just, uh, just popped in here. Um, this is our call tracking software. So I wanted to, this is just a, a random client, but as you can see <clears throat> for, for the past 30 days for this client, if you look at these numbers, they got 54 raw leads. And what's that? 38 of those are Google My Business, right? So again, and that's kind of the trend we're seeing in 2021. And it's heading more and more in that direction. That's about 70, 75% of the leads are coming through Google My Business, right? And so and just to show you all an example, let's say, I'll show you how this would work. Um, well, y'all can't see my search bar. I'm going to type in fire damage contractor Phoenix, right? And this is how that, so let's just say I'm a, I'm a prospect. I'm doing a search. Let me open up my window so you can see. All right. So let's say my, I have a kitchen fire. I do the search. I'm like, oh, interesting. So here's that particular client I just showed you, right? <clears throat> not, not number one, but number three, right? And I mean, for our clients, you know, that kind of, bothers me a little bit so our what we do as a team is like hey i want them number one not number three um but but here's the thing as you have to start somewhere right you can't start at number one so as we work for our clients to push them up the rankings you can still get calls as you can see this is just one key there's hundreds and thousands of different phrases that you can build and rank for over time but for this particular example fire damage contractor um you know he's number three right so do you get calls from even being number three this is Arizona Construction Restoration, like, you know, Google My Business. So, yes, you can, right? That's just one particular term. But I just want to kind of show you that's how a process goes. And that th this isn't a call tracking webinar, but, you know, hopefully you guys are having a way to track the data. Kind of you can see where the leads are coming from. Um, and then you can see, uh, you know, so here they are too, now, organically. And if, you know, you're interested to learn more about search engine optimization or SEO and how to rank here on page one, and again, you know, we're not number one yet, but I can promise you we're going to do everything in our power to get them there. Because again, I don't like, we don't like people being above our clients. It's just the way we are. But again, as y'all saw, you can still get traffic leads and business just by being on page one and then the three pack in general, right? But obviously the goal is to get to number one, but as you're making that climb, you can generate business. So I just want to show y'all that's kind of, this is just a different client here. I just want to show y'all how this is broken down in case y'all did want to, you know, on your own set up some call tracking or, um, you know, a way just to, to where you can see where the business is coming from. And obviously you want to do more of what works. Um, and that's why, you know, that, that particular client's investing heavily in their Google My Business because it's, it can be fruitful, right? I mean, just one of those phone calls for, you know, just an example, fire, some bigger fire jobs, as I'm sure y'all know, I mean, we're talking six figure jobs, right? So if you're getting, I mean, not all of those calls were for, were for fire damage, but, you know, one of them could, you know, we see it happen all the time. One of them could be a $100,000 fire job from one, right? And if you get 50-something calls, um, the ROI on that is not too shabby. Um, so that was my, you know, I wanted to be a little shorter rant, but that's kind of like, yes, it's important. Yes, you can get business from the internet. Um, 
So hopefully, you know, if you're not already working on your Google Maps, hopefully that little, you know, blip there was to convince you that it's extremely important. I would definitely start thinking about it if you're not already working on ranking in the Google Maps. Yeah. Now, what are the biggest challenges or, or changes recently that we've seen? This, this is kind of a change that's, this happened, I think, toward, I mean, it's kind of happened for a while, but, you know, there used to be seven results in the map pack, but now there's only three. I'm sure most of you have noticed that change by now. There are paid ads in the map section. You know, we, we do come across a lot of clients that don't quite understand that. And that could be another great lead generating channel. And I'll show you an example of that here in a second. You know, the Google local services, that's basically rolled out nationwide at this point. And as far as we've seen, it kind of started in San Francisco, Phoenix, Houston, Miami, the bigger markets, and they've slowly rolled it out to the medium and small um, cities. But that's kind of changed up the, the SERPs, right? The search, search engine results page. Um, it's kind of shifted things around. But as I just showed you guys, Google Maps is still alive and well. Um, and it's still where the majority of the traffic is coming from. So that's why today I wanted to kind of show you guys the things to, to be aware of. Um, so you can, you know, work on getting your own company uh, ranked in those, in those listings. So, and this is an example of the, a three pack ad, right? Or a, you have to connect your Google My Business profile to your Google Ads account. Then you have to set up, um, you know, lo specific location extensions, et cetera, to get these ads to show up. But I'm not going to go into detail on how to do that in this webinar, but just, uh, you know, whether you're working with us or working with your current marketing company, um, if you want us to help you set something up like this, you know, we can do it. But just be, you know, be aware that this is a whole other um, way to get into the three pack. You can't force it in there yet. Uh, Google doesn't allow that because that'd be pretty. I know a lot of companies be willing to pay uh, to get that number one spot um, because we all know, as I showed you guys, there's a lot of jobs that come through there. But if you if you set up your AdWords account and connect everything properly and, and do the optimization, uh, you can get a ad to show in the three pack, um, which is which is obviously very beneficial. So, you know, I touched on this earlier. This is the Google local service ads. You know, some people call it Google guaranteed, Google local services. Um, all of those are the are the same thing. It's just the it's almost like Google took the three pack and turned it horizontal, right? Across the top. Um, you know, definitely recommend setting that up, doing it. You can get some, uh, you can get some good leads, but we haven't seen to where, you know, we don't have any clients getting 50 leads a month just from that alone. Uh, we haven't seen that yet, but again, it's not that hard to set up. And if it can, you know, if you can generate an extra 10, 20, 30, you know, 40 grand a month and jobs from it, then, then we always recommend our clients, clients do it. But so this is kind of, you know, all of it on one page, right? Local services, AdWords below it, Google My Business, and then you got the organic or the SEO stuff below it. And, you know, just to help help you guys out, if, if you want, this isn't a local services webinar, but we have found that a lot of companies um, aren't really, they, they, they don't even realize that this is separate from Google My Business, right? We come across that a lot. Um, so if you try to want, if you want to set this up on your own, you can go to this URL here and um, start setting it up. And you got to get you know, your business licenses verified, background checks done, etc. Uh, but it will kind of walk you through the process. Um, or if you don't really want to deal with any of that, you just you know that's why we exist to, to take that load off your plate. Um, you know, just give us a call at this number, and we can, or just you know, go to our website, book a call. We can uh, we can help you out. Um, but, you know, ideally, you want, it's why we, we, you know, we have a package we call local dominance, because ideally you want to be in all four of these channels, right? It's in business, you know, the more lead channels you have going, the more leads, the more sales, right? It's just kind of how it works. So the more pillars you have, the more leads you're going to get, the better you're going to be able to grow your business, right? So that's why we recommend uh, our clients do all, but we understand you know clients are in different situations. Some only some want to grow slowly. Some want to like do them all out of the gates. You know, I understand everybody's in uh, different circumstances, but you know, long term, if you're looking to you know grow your business month over month, year over year, then, then we always highly recommend that you you keep all four of these methods 
in mind um, as you build things out. But, <laughs> and one thing we've noticed too, this has been a, a big change. You know, three, four, five years ago, you used to be able to create a fake listing, you know, put water damage in the business title, and then tomorrow you'd be ranking and, and people are getting business that way. Um, but, you know, as Google slowly takes over the world, they're obviously getting smarter and under, they, they know they're, they have, their algorithm knows fake listings from real listings. Um, and they are constantly wiping these out. Um, so you can see that, I mean, this number might even be slightly higher now, but since 2015, they've wiped out 70% of the, the fake ones. Um, so just keep that in mind if you're, I wouldn't try, I, I would do it by the book, right? Like Google knows if, if people are doing spammy links, spammy this and that, you know, spammy names. Uh, so that's not gonna benefit you long-term, especially if they take down your Google My Business page and you go from number, yeah, you might get to number one, like let's say in a couple of weeks, which is, it's hard to do that now, but even if you did, they take it down. And then if you're getting 75% of your leads from that channel and it goes down, you got a problem, right? Um, your revenue is going to dip significantly. Um, so just keep that in mind. And I think I, I'm going to go over a little bit more of things not to do here in a little bit. Um, but here's some things that we come across a lot that could be hurting your rankings in the maps, right? And, and, and some of this is more of a strategy and, and long-term approach, but you need an office and whatever your main target area is, you need an office located there. Now, what we see is you can kind of rank anywhere from 15 to 20 mile radius. I mean, sometimes it's a little tighter depending on the competition. Sometimes we've seen it pushed out to about 30 mile radius around your office location. But, you know, we have clients that do this. If you're truly trying to dominate a market, you know, like Houston, for example, or Miami, you know, Miami, you got Miami, Fort Lauderdale. Like if you're truly trying to dominate, like we've had clients like, hey, let's once they're dominating in Miami, let's open up another office in Fort Lauderdale because, you know, there's that 15, 30, 30 mile radius to where you can rank. Um, so I just want to point that out. Like if you're in Miami, but you want to focus or get most of your work from Fort Lauderdale, then keep that in mind as you set up a new office or as you think about your expansion strategy about where you're going to put it. Um, if I was going to open up a restoration company, like I would, I'd be very strategic about where the office is located, where the where areas I want to grow it out to, uh, because it'll, it'll make your life a lot easier when it comes to rankings uh, into the three pack. Um, and I kind of already touched on this, but don't, uh, you know, don't do PO boxes anymore. Um, fake addresses, it, it, Google's catching on to it. And like, yeah, it, it might work, but the, the risk is not worth the reward, right? Like, cause it'll, it might help, you know, for a couple of weeks, but as soon as Google, they're going to catch it, you're gone. And you don't want to leave, lose that business um, overnight. And then, you know, inconsistent name, address, phone number, profile. This is, you, you might hear it called NAP for short, you know, name, address, phone number, NAP. That's basically a citation or directory listing. And all that is, is just your name, address, phone number. And just as an example of that, if you're on Yelp, your, your Yelp directory listing is a, is a citation, right? Or directory. Um, but if, you know, for our clients, and if, you're, and if you're wanting to rank in the Google map, you want a lot of relevant citations, but you want your name, address, phone number to, to be consistent across those properties so it makes Google, it's easier for Google. If you think about it, there's this bot, you know, crawling and stuff. It's, it's all relevant to that business. It's just easier because if you think about it, if it sees this name, a different address, different phone number, the bot, you know, is going to be like, well, I don't even know what business this is talking about. Um, I mean, it kind of makes sense if you step back and, and look at it from that perspective. Um, don't spam your city name. Uh, and actually, I thought about this earlier. I'll show you in one second. Uh, don't do, you know, Bob's restoration and then put hyphen water damage. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm actually going to show you this now because this is interesting. I was looking at this because we <clears throat> we had a we ran into this with one of our clients, and you know, it was kind of bothering me because they were getting beat out by a spam. But then, you know, we stick to our guns. We do white label, you know, SEO, Google My Business stuff, which is pr tried. It, it's proven over time, right? Well, they, they hopped the guy that was getting spammy. And um, 
I don't know. It just made us feel good, but just, just don't do it because you know, we, not on any of our clients, but I've tested, we, we have our own properties and profiles that we're testing things on just to make sure we're always in the know it's working. Um, and that stuff will get taken down. So that's why I just don't guys don't do it. You still, you still come across it. And, and also it still works for some time, but long-term I would not recommend that. Um, and here, I, and I, that's why I'm going to show you guys an example real quick. Um, we're going to look at an example in Denver. Uh, and this is this is Denver, Colorado. So if you've been around the restoration world for a while, like this isn't this is top five competitive, most competitive markets in the country, right? It's your your Houston, LA, Miami, Denver. So I'm gonna do an example search for here in Denver. Um, for you know water Denver. So look at this. And that you know, and if you know, this is a um, we actually know all the all these guys, but and this is a great company too, nothing against them, but I, I would not recommend this right here. And see, Google's smart enough, like, and, and they have had better, better ranking, obviously. We, we watch this, I watch this just to make sure. But look here, all pro, we were able to get them to jump to number one by doing it the right way. Um, and because when I see this, it, you know, it always crosses our minds is this a new strategy? Is this working now? But Google knows. Long term, this is not their business name. And as you can see, doing things the right way, what I'm talking about today in the webinar, by the book, white label, it, it'll prove, it'll, because they weren't number one for this term for a while, right? And we kept doing what we do. Hey, it takes a little time sometimes to kick in. And then boom, they jumped, jumped these guys to number one uh, by doing it. And so yes, like you will see people with the keywords in the business name. For a long term solution, I do not recommend uh, doing that. So it's just a little, side note rant but you know that's because that that you know a couple of years ago it worked well and then you know people kind of quit doing it you know like from last year 2019 and then I, I am kind of starting to see it more and more now um but again google's always changing right so that's why you got to kind of see but again just we we just went through a whole process with the client on that and um doing it the right way um seems to always win long term so just Keep that in mind if you are trying to gain gain the system with your your Google My Business name. I would I would think twice about doing that. And then reviews, right? Like reviews are becoming more and more important. Um, if you're not, just get Google My Business reviews. You should have active um, plan and strategy in place to get there because it is a ranking signal to get into the three pack. It's not the only. You can't rank solely on reviews alone. Um, but once you get into the three pack, you know, the reviews is a huge conversion aspect. It's, it's, you know, I know how all this works and whenever I need um, a home service provider in, you know, my market here in Charleston, South Carolina, like I, I look at the Google Maps rankings, I look at the reviews, I'll make the call. And, and I just showed you that apparently 75% of our clients leads they're getting per month is, is happening to them too, right? Um, and, and a lot of people, you know, they look at the three pack first and then, Whoever gets the call a lot of times, just because you're number one doesn't always mean you'll get that call. A lot of times it'll be based on the number of reviews and the review rate. Um, so obviously I would, well, you want to focus on reviews as you go, but you got to get to the, you know, people have to find you first and then, you know, the reviews will, will kind of follow. But I think even starting out, getting five-star reviews, taking care of your clients should be a part of the process as you go along. So I'm going to kind of, you know, we kind of showed you, like, yes, it's important to get into the three pack. So I'm going to talk a little bit more like, all right, well, how do we, how do we get there? I kind of showed you guys some things not to do, right? That'll be slowing down your progress or maybe even prevent your progress from getting there. And some of this is going to be basic, but we still come across a lot of clients that this isn't, uh, they, they skip the basics and, and Google likes to see kind of a, you know, everything filled out completely. So, uh, you know, First of all, you want to verify your Google My Business listing. We, you know, it seems most companies are kind of aware of that now, um, but we still come across it where people's their Google My Business profile is not verified. So make sure you verify it. Make sure you put your real company name, however you want it to read across all properties, right? Like the the, the Yelps, uh, the the Google My Business, Home Advisor. I mean, anything you do where you put your your NAP, right? Your name, address, phone number. You want it to be consistent and then you want to plug that in here without the keywords 
You want to have your website there because some people won't make that call directly. They'll click through to your website, right? They want to check you out a little, a little further. Uh, where you can use a local phone number. Um, I, you know, people will still call 800 number, but if you're if your toilet just overflowed on the second floor and you got water dripping through the ceiling, like you want somebody there fast and yesterday, right? Like they don't want to like so when they see 800 numbers, they kind of just I think subconsciously or something, they could be thinking, oh, well, it's, I want somebody local, right? So I, well, I'm in an 843 area code. So if I were to go to Google, it, it would make, you know, I would think like I want an 843 person because that person is somewhere around me, right? Um, it's, that's just very important in, in all home service niches, actually, not just restoration. But, but keep that in mind. It doesn't have to be, I mean, if you need 800 number five, but like if you can, you know, get a local. Um, and we actually set up local tracking numbers like I showed you guys, we like to track where all the different um, jobs come from for our clients. Um, so we'll get a, a, a area code specific to their location. So that helps with the conversions. And we're gonna do everything we can to, to help with the conversion. And then use a real office address. Um, you know, PO boxes used to work back in the day, but uh, you know, Google Google's pretty smart, right? We can, we can all agree to that. They know they know people are doing that. That's why they've been whacking those listings to take them down. Uh, photos. Um, if you can upload photos from your office location, that can help a lot. Like, because when you upload photos, Google knows where you are, right? I think we can all agree to that at this point based on your IP address and all that. Like, even have your office manager, your assistant, somebody, your technicians when they get back to the office, whatever. I mean, they don't have to be uploaded from your office, but you know, priority one will be uploading as many photos as, as you can and, and a lot of different things, right? You want your photos to almost tell a story of like, you know, your office, team photos, your, if you got wrapped trucks with your name on it, show them some of that, show them some before and afters. Um, you know, you can almost tell a story with your pictures, which, which will help with conversions. And then, I mean, the more, the better when it comes to that, right? It's, it, this is kind of like, when it comes to your Google My Business rankings, you want to completely fill it out. And I even have on here, like all your services, you want to list it, all your categories, you want to list it, your hours of operation, you want to list it. Um, because Google, when it crawls that, it'll be able to see like, all right, oh, this guy mentioned mold removal in his description. Somebody did a search for mold remo removal near me. This guy's Google My Business is here. Let's show them this result, right? I mean, it, it's, it kind of makes common sense if you step back and think about it. The more descriptive you are and built out you are on your profile, it makes the Google bot's job easier to see your relevance, right, um, related to the search term. So just keep that in mind, like, because we do see, like, people might upload one photo, then they're coming out, but, you know, everybody gets busy, right? And I understand that. Like, you guys are running companies, um, and you, know, you don't necessarily have time to sit here and upload pictures all day, but, you know, if you're a marketing company, or if you're working with us, we can help you with that, obviously, that's why, that's why we're here. Um, and I just took, you know, this is just a screenshot just to show you, you can... You know, once you're in your Google My Business dashboard, I mean, it'll tell you right here, add photo. And there's actually a separate area here, as you can see on the screen, for photos. Um, if you kind of want to see a breakdown of interior, exterior, team photos, you know, you can get it. Um, you can break it down pretty good. But I just want to show you guys, that, you know, if you don't know how to navigate the Google My Business profiles uh, that well yet, you can kind of, you can go to the home and then click add, add photo there. Um, and then there's the, if you see here, there's insights. Um, you know, hope, ideally, if you're working with a marketing company, you know, they're showing you this, this data and insights and some sort of dashboard or something. But if not, if you're trying to figure all, out, all this out on your own, you click the insights screen and you can kind of see your total searches and stuff like that. And, and any other data, I think it's based on like quarterly and monthly. And then, you know, the past 30 days, you can, you can look at all that data to kind of see how you're, how you're showing up. Um, and I mean, this is just a, an example of, you know, a client of ours, like we were working with them, adding more photos, getting views, and you can see, um, you know, the average business like him in that market would get, you know, 3,500, um, photo views a month or a quarter, sorry. And, you know, he was getting 500 more a month, um. And again, like at the end of the day, like pictures don't 
I understand it's just a picture, but this helps with conversions, so it helps to more revenue. That's why all this all this is about more revenue and growing your, your company. This is just a means to an end, right? Google My Business, SEO, uh, website built to convert, et cetera. And this is just one piece of it, right? That's why the pictures are, I know it's just a picture, like nobody, it's, it's important, right? Um, so here's some other best practices I wanna share with you guys. I've already touched on the, the, the pictures. Just put a bunch of good pictures in there and then every now and then you'll have to do it every day. But you know, if you're doing enough jobs, you can get like, you can add a new photo or two once a month or something, once every couple of months. Um, and especially if you're doing the, the put back work, right? Like the, the before and after, if you get a flooded kitchen and you rebuild um, a sweet kitchen for the client, a before and after of that on your website and in your Google My Pro Business profile um, would be beneficial. I do Google My Business posting. That's a ranking signal. Um, you don't have to do it every day, but you know I would do it every now and then uh, or every 90 days at a minimum. Uh, we do it weekly for our clients. That kind of seems to be the sweet spot. I mean, you don't want to, uh, you know, you could do it every day, but uh, if, uh, is every day really going to move the needle as much as once a week? We haven't found that it does. So once a week is kind of keeps things fresh. Um, you know, Google sees that it's and it, and it kind of helps as a ranking signal and then you know respond to your, your reviews if you get there's a little question box you know on google uh, a business profile and somebody asks you a question respond to it and google will see all that activity and then you'll get you know more ranking points for that um you know there's another way of saying it now another thing you want to do is citations I, I talked about yelp a little bit earlier i talked about map name address phone number you want a lot of relevant citations across the web you want to make i think consistency is one of the most important aspects to that and you don't want duplicates too right like we do see this a lot people might have especially with duplicate google my business profiles because then, then google doesn't know which one to, to put in the three pack right and then usually what happens neither gets put there because they're like oh this is too complicated you know i'm just gonna you know move on to the next company um so when it comes to citations i, I keep these, these three bullet points um, in mind and that, that'll get you a, a far far enough along to start seeing some uh, improvements now the best tools for these there's many out there uh, most most of the good ones you do have to pay for i mean you know obviously if you're working with us we take care of all that for you and you know your marketing company should be handling this for you as well but you know bright local is one white spark moz local yext um those are some of the bigger i mean there's probably there's many more out there but these are some of the bigger names in the industry that can kind of do an audit for you so where you know where to go to fix these citations and you know here's just an example report um from from bright local which is the, the one we, we use in our company but you can do an audit and as you can see um this is for like a you know a prospect that came to us you know they have it looks like 16 total and out of two of them 14 there's errors right so you know i don't know specifically who this is but i can promise you they're probably not number one in the three pack right that's that's too many errors uh, and that and the errors could be anything from what well, it, it's actually showing us right here the business name um doesn't match across any of these the phone number is wrong half the time um and the zip code's only off once right so at least they got the, the zip code some, somewhat right. But again, you want all the name, address, and phone number to be consistent to really get the boost boost you're looking for. Um, so all those tool, tools will do something like this to where you can get an idea of kind of where your company stands and where you, where the improvements uh, need to be made. Um, and and we actually, if, if you want, we'll run a free uh, citation report for you to kind of let you know where you stand and obviously yeah if you want us to help you fix it that's what we do all day every day um and if not you know that's fine too right we're just here to help so if you want us to uh, if you're just kind of curious where, where you stand um you know give our office a call and ask for simon he'll help you out or you can go to this link on the screen here book a call um and you'll talk to either either me or simon and then we can we can help you uh we'll do that for free no charge uh just to help you out um, and see where you can improve. So here's some other best practices that 
you guys need to keep in mind, right? So we're going to talk about claim your Google My Business profile, verify it. You'll probably get the postcard in the mail. And then once you enter the, the code, it'll be verified. And then when you're filling it out, make sure you're adding the pictures, you're filling out like the categories, business hours, services, description, all that stuff. Um, and then use a tool. Like I already showed you guys, Bright Local Moz, White Spark, there's Yex, there's a lot of them out there. Use a tool to start working on your citations and please make sure that they're consistent as you build them out. Um, there's no point in, you know, because if you do 50 of them wrong, it's going to be quite a bit of work to clean that up, right? So, um, and then, you know, niche listing opportunities too. That's kind of like a little hack that you want your, your citations consistent but if it's a knit you know if it's a damage restoration related directory and you get a citation on that that's going to add a lot of relevance in google's eyes and get you more ranking points um when it comes to ranking in the three pack so keep that in mind too as you're building out these citations the more niche re relevant the better and i and i touched on this briefly but you know, you want a lot of real reviews. Don't just like the the PO, the fake addresses. Those are getting taken down. Um, uh, you know, just don't don't waste your time on that. And the real reviews, like, you know, I've been testing some stuff too on the side. Like, it, they're not posting all reviews, right? Like, it's Google. Like I said, they basically know everything at this point. Like, they're they're somehow able to see. I mean, not always. It's not perfect, but we have seen it to where like. It has to be a real customer review. You know, don't, because we've also seen some, you know, don't call your 10 best friends like, hey, man, I need to leave me a review. I mean, if, if you guys have done business together and you actually help them, then yeah, it's fine. I mean, Google probably knows how that somehow, right? Um, but they're, they're actually taking, that sometimes now they just won't even post at all. But we've seen it where if it is a fake review and it gets crawled or somebody flags or whatever, they'll actually take it down. Um, so just like the spammy business names where it's not worth the time and effort, just don't just do it the right way from, you know, take care of your customers, get a five-star review and it'll benefit you in the long run because, and this is just an example, right? Of a client, like not number one yet, eventually yes. But even in the meantime, while they're making the climb, what's the first thing you notice when you look here? Like just because they're, I'm not, the top guy has five reviews our client has 62 five stars. The guy below him, seven, and he only got a 3.9. Who do you think is going to get the call? I mean, I'm not saying everybody's, I'm not going to say the top guy and the bottom guy aren't going to get calls. Yes, they'll get called. But I can promise you the majority of the calls are going to the five star 62. I mean, he's leaving them, and the next guy has seven reviews, right? So you've got to think about it. If your house was flooded, you need help. How would you, know, how would you interpret this? Um, search engine result, right? You'd be like, well, I don't know if I can trust the other guys. I mean, and nothing against these guys. If, if you see this, like, there's always something, right? Things happen, but over time, you want more and more five star reviews. It's it's a huge conversion aspect. And like I said, it's not only a rate, um, a ranking signal, but it's also a conversion aspect as, as well. So here's here's a couple ways that you can you can drive reviews, right? Like there's like we have tools we offer for our clients that, you know, you can just, it can be an app on the phone. Your, you know, technician can do a, you know, shoot the customer um, a text message and say, you know, hey, Debbie, you know, if you're happy with my service, you don't mind. It really helped me out if you leave us a five star review. Um, and sometimes, you know, people are weird about that or whatever. But a lot of times, if you, if you do, this is why I like reviews too. If you do a good job, they're like, yeah, no problem. Like, just tell me how to do it. Um, or you could leave, you know, a printed review card. I mean, this is kind of old school, but I still see it every now and then, like a handwritten testimonial. And I have seen it where people take pictures of those and then upload them to your website, right? Like, hey, a review testimonial is still a review testimonial. So that is one way to do it. Um, but having the training the technicians to do it is, is the best way we've seen because, and I like it too, because if they're going to have to ask for a review, they know they're going to have to offer a good service because they're not going to ask for a review if, if Debbie's not happy because they're not going to ask. If they think they're going to get a one-star review, then, you know, they wouldn't be very smart to go to Debbie when she's pissed off and she's going to leave them a one-star, right? So I like it too, because it's kind of a catch 22. Not only is it going to force and push the technicians to do good quality work. Um, and then as a, a byproduct of that, 
they can um, get a five star review to, to build your reputation uh, at the same at the same time. Um, and then sometimes we we see clients they like to like depending on who's doing their asking for the review. Some people when they're going back to the office doing their paperwork, they might call, text, email. Um, you know, Debbie in this example, I'm using, you know, hey, if you don't mind, we please leave a review. But the conversion rate on that is a lot smaller than if you just train your technician, Bob, when he's there on the spot, face to face, like, hey, Debbie, if you don't mind. And, and I'll just tell you a little, one of the simplest ways to do it that'll work. Um, again, if it was me and I was about to go do it right now, I would say, if I was the technician, I'd be like, hey, Debbie, if you don't mind, it seems like you're happy with the work I just did. And, and everybody has their cell phone within two feet of them, right? Like everybody watching this now, I can promise you your cell phone is probably in the same room, right? So you could, uh, if I was asking you, it's like, hey, Debbie, if you don't mind, like, do you mind pulling out your, your cell phone, searching us on Google, you know, type in Bob's restoration, then they Google my business. You can almost walk her through that. I mean, yeah, with COVID and all that, yes, you might need to keep your distance. Um, but you can walk her through that. I say, if you don't mind, search her name, click write a review. And here's the, the good thing about that. She's already going to be logged into Google, you know, 95% chance she will be already. So she, if she pulls out her phone, she can search, click write a review. She can type something in, you know, about me right there on the spot. And be like, All right, thanks, Debbie. Um, you can say, you know, can I see what you, uh, you know, my boss likes when I, when I do this. If you don't mind, can I see what you wrote, whatever. Um, but you can just see that's one simple way to do it. If you don't have a, a tool, you know, yes, tools and all that makes that process easier. But if you don't have that and you're just looking to get more, you know, like after this webinar, you could go do this right now if you're a technician or get with your team. Like, hey, whenever you finish up with a client, ask if you did a good job, ask them if they don't mind leaving a Google My Business review. And that's a simple way to get it right there on the spot. And Another ranking factor on this is on-page optimization. I'm not going to go too in depth on this um, on this webinar. You know, check our YouTube channel or, or call our office or email us, whatever. We'll we'll get you a webinar recording if you want it. Uh, but I know our YouTube channel does have. I think last month I actually did the uh, the you know what's working now for SEO, and I go more in depth on on-page optimization because there's a lot there's a lot more to it than this name, address, phone number I'm about to talk about. But just know, it, you know, obviously Google, because when you have your website connected to your Google My Business profile, Google, the bot, is crawling that and it's linking all that together, right? So it's scanning your website to see, do we have, this This counts as a NAP, right? Name, address, phone number. So as you can see, you want to have this, it's usually in the footer on the website. Um, because Google, again, it'll, it's crawling all this, and if all that matches up, and the Google bot's like, all right, you know, I'm going to give them some more points uh, for having that on there. So, you know, as far as, as a starting point, I would just, you know, for everybody watching, just make sure the, the footer of your website has a consistent name, address, phone number on the bottom of your website. And then as you build out the citations over time, you can make sure um, that you have, have them on those properties as well, right? So that's kind of our our formula that what we do. I mean, there's you know little nuances that, that we kind of do uh, you know behind the scenes to do that. But what I mean, I just basically laid out the formula for you guys. If you do all that on a consistent uh, basis and clean up what's wrong, that's I mean that's 95 percent of the battle there. Um, and then you know depending on your market, I mean you could do half of that and then be number one for a ton of keywords depending on your competition. If you're in Houston, Texas, it's going to take a little more firepower probably, right? Like it, it depends on how many restoration uh, companies are in your particular market, the population, and there's a lot of variables, right? But this is the overall formula um, to get it to work. Now, for any of you, you don't, you know, I run into this a lot. They're like, Jamie, I'm running the company. I don't have time to do this. Like, will you please just fix all this for me? We do offer free discovery calls. Um, to where we, we can do a citation audit for you, right? And we'll actually do, if you want us to, we can look at your reviews, your directory listings, all of this to kind of see like, hey, it looks like you're doing this right, but there's some room for improvement here. Um, we, you know, if you want us to help you, cool. If not, cool. Like, um, we're just here to help, right? But what we're, you know, we're doing this for free too. 
uh, just to help you guys. So if that is something you're interested in, you know, go to this link on the screen, book a call, or you can just call our, call our office and, you know, say you're interested in the uh, a free discovery call or free citation audit, and we'll uh, either myself or Simon will probably reach out to you and uh, get you all squared away. So that's 843-380-5737 is our office number. Um, you know, give us a call. We'll help you out, and uh, we'll go from there. And then if you guys have any uh, any questions, um, in the meantime, I'm, I'm here to help, and we can uh, kind of take it from there.